Every big game hunter thinks that their cartridge is the best when it comes to taking on the big one, and that is the moose. But which ones actually work? Dave and I are going to talk about it on the Ammunition Guides podcast. Hello, friends and lovers. This is Dave Trillo, and you're listening to the Ammunition Guide podcast brought to you by none other than Ammo.com. It's happened to all of us. We've been sent on a mission by our fearless leader to retrieve the coveted mooseberry bush. All of a sudden, we're confronted by a flying squirrel and his large, dull companion. Dealing with the squirrel is easy enough, but the moose is proven difficult. Chris, we need the best cartridge for this job. Oh, Dave, you're right. If Bullwinkle is coming after you, we're going to talk about what you should be loading in your hunting rifle. And we're just going to kick this thing right off here with the American Classic. And that's none other than the 30 6 Springfield. Now, I mean, if you want to talk about the one cartridge that can do it all, of course, every 30 6 shooter is going to say, well, is it better than a 30 6 It is the big game hunting cartridge for North America. I don't really have many bad things I can say about the 30 6 Springfield because it has the power that's needed to put Bullwinkle in the freezer. Consistently ranks third or fourth most popular center file rifle cartridge in the country, so you're going to find plenty of ammo for it. It's been around since 1906, so it's over 100 years old at this point, and it just keeps on trucking. It doesn't stop. It's an amazing cartridge, a great choice for any big game hunter out there if you just want to have a round that gets it done. Now, one round here we have next, it's going to be a little bit controversial, but can do the job if your shot placement is correct, is going to be the 308 Winchester. Now, of course, that was the successor to the 30 6 Springfield, really found its home in the big game hunting community. Performance-wise, kind of indistinguishable from the 30 6 308 Win, it, it's a more popular cartridge. It, you're going to find an even greater selection of ammo if you go for it. Uh, you get the option of, of getting that semi-automatic rifle. Just super versatile. The fact that it can do everything. That said, we kind of started with the two minimum threshold rounds for hunting moose. I'd feel a bit comfortable, a bit more comfortable, something with a little more oomph. I'd also like to stick to the 30 caliber bullet, which is, is basically our next round's forte. And that is none other than the 300 Winchester Magnum, other known as the 300 Win Mag. Now, this, in my opinion, is pretty much the gold standard moose round. I think that this is the one that most people are going to go for. This is incredibly popular with elk hunters, and I know people are going to be sounding off in the comments. And if you haven't done so already, make sure you click that like and subscribe button down there. Leave us a comment. Let us know what your favorite moose round is. But, uh, yeah, obviously elk are not as big as moose. Moose are bigger. But the 300 Win Mag has the power and the capability to do it. Those 180 grain bullets really potent against big game. Of course, we're going to do a touch on its relative shortcoming, which is that that powerful recoil. If, if you had two identical weight rifles, a 308 and a 300 Win Mag, you could definitely reasonably expect like twice as much recoil, somewhere in the 40 foot pounds range for a 300 Win Mag. If you want something that you won't feel in your shoulder, this next one is even more controversial than the 308 Winchester, and that's the 6.5 Creedmoor. And I'm going to have to caveat this one. I'm not quite sure if this one is going to be enough for moose, but I've heard from hunters that they hunt moose with this all the time. And I think this brings up really the difference between power and shot placement. A 6.5 can get the job done if you can put it in the right spot. And to be sure, this thing is just laser accurate, so you can sink one right between the, the two correct ribs to put a moose's nose down in the dirt pronto. But uh, like you say, something with a little more oomph might be better for an animal that won't hesitate to retaliate against you. And if you want to shoot a 6.5, this next cartridge definitely gives you a little bit more oomph, but still has that nice, long, slender 6.5 millimeter bullet. And that's the 6.5 by 300 Weatherby Magnum. Now, this is a big boy. When we're getting into the heavier calibers now, then these are really going to slap, for lack of a better term, when it comes to recoil. A beast. Hard to find. we got to point that out. It is a little trickier to find. It is more of a niche cartridge, and 
you may be able to find it, you may not. Uh, but if you do need ammo, make sure you click that link down in the description. Get your free $20 off coupon for here at ammo.com. And yeah, the 6.5x300 Weatherby Mag, a great, great cartridge. Definitely very flat shooting, even flatter than the Creedmoor. And this thing has got over 600 FPS higher than the Creedmoor at the muzzle. So it's burning, for lack of a better term. But uh, it's definitely going to burn a hole in your wallet, too, if you're shooting a lot of these. To be honest, Chris, I'd, I'd much rather recommend the 270 win over mm -hmm. that one. Just, just so much more popular. Uh, also decent for deer hunting, yep. but another gold standard moose load, as, as you put it. Uh, introduced in 1925, really an iconic deer cartridge and elk cartridge for that matter. Gives you that nice flat trajectory, but the terminal ballistics to really take down you know, caribou and moose with the proper shot placement. Jack O'Connor was the big proponent of the 270 Winchester, and he did a lot of hunting in Africa with the 270. And uh, yeah, he, he brought home the trophies to say the least. So the 270 yeah. has been put through its paces and it can do the job. But another big one that shoots that nice seven millimeter bullet is the seven millimeter Remington Magnum, otherwise known as the seven millimeter Rem Mag. Uh, this is probably one of Remington's more uh, you know, successful Magnum cartridges that they've released, mm -hmm. and it just gets the job done. Yeah, I think it's second only to the 300 Win Mag in terms of popularity. Yep. Um, I think like the 300 Win Mag, it, its belt is more of a cosmetic feature than a practical one. It is. It, it's one of those old adages, and we're going to talk about actually the, the cartridge here in just a minute that uh, both of these came from, uh, which is the 375 H&H &H Magnum. But yeah, the belted cartridge, it's... It's more of an older design. It, it gives people the confidence, and it really just kind of shows that heritage from the 375 yeah. H&H. Yeah, it was important to keep the cartridge from over-inserting, uh, mm -hmm. which is a problem with the straight-walled ones. Then the bottleneck ones came out, but people expected to see the belt on a Magnum. So, yeah, you just we still have belts that are just cosmetic, but uh, a throwback to the round we'll touch on in just a bit. The 338 Win Mag, though, I'm going to I'm going to say something controversial, Chris. OK, it's no joke. Dave, you're absolutely right. The 338 Win Mag is no joke. This thing is a house, to say the least. The 338 Win Mag, the big brother of the 300 Win Mag, really packs a wallop. I mean, we're talking like 225 grain bullets at 3,800 foot pounds of energy at the muzzle. That is just insane. Uh, these are some honking cartridges. It still stayed popular despite only having five years of a limelight. It gives you that kind of bridge cartridge between these even bigger ones. The one that sired them all, the big old gray beard cartridge in the room is going to be the 375 H&H &H Magnum. Now this one was developed in 1912 and has just basically survived the test of time. Obviously a much older design as far as a cartridge is concerned. This one's throwing 300 grain pills out at uh, you know about 2,500 feet per second. So that's impressive to say the least for a cartridge that's so old. That's like six times more bullet, roughly the same muzzle velocity as a 223 rem. We'll do the job on a moose if he comes across your way. Uh, as well as a newer comer to the game, and that is the 375 Ruger. Now, basically made to outperform the older 375 H&H mag, uh, so it will fit in a standard length action, which is very nice. It does kind of outperform the 375 H&H, but not by much, so it really hasn't taken off, kind of like some of these other calibers that we're going to talk about. Yeah, the other one that's had an enormous head start. I've heard them mention in the same sentence as good rifles to have on hand if a grizz were to get a little too close to you. But uh, if we want to get to the granddad of them all, I know we talked about some old ones, but we're going to talk about the classic. And we're going to talk about none other than the 4570 government. Now, this one has been around for a hot minute, was the cartridge of choice before, of course, the 3040 Krag, and was in the famous... 1873 trapdoor Springfield rifle. Now, this one, Dave, uh, really kind of captured the American West, to say the least. This is one of the original sniper rounds. It's just a mm -hmm. big, long, straight round with a big, wide bullet. This is uh, the Buffalo gun round. It's extremely powerful, like like a lot of these you know, rounds towards the end of our list. Um, very steep bullet drop. It's, it's insanely accurate, but you've got to learn how to accommodate that that exaggerated parabolic trajectory. Uh, but once you've mastered it, you're you're going to be sharpshooting with the best of them. 
another neat thing about the 4570 government, we always got to point out, is you can get a revolver chambered for it as well. So you can have that truly in your back pocket if you don't mind carrying around several pounds of steel. The versatility of the cartridge has been shown with the advent of smokeless powder uh, because this was originally a black powder round. Well, let me tell you, it'll do the job on the moose, but you've got to be in close like Dave was talking about. This one does yeah. have a bit of an arching trajectory to it. So you gotta be able to compensate for that. And Chris, you love hand loading and this one's famously easy to hand load, isn't it? It really is. This is a great cartridge to pick up because there are so many recipes, so many different bullets available in that classic 45 caliber projectile really gives you a lot of flexibility as far as what you want to do. But uh, that wraps up our list as far as moose calibers are concerned. Uh, for me personally, if I had to pick one out of them, I'm probably going to go with the 300 Win Mag. I think that's going to be my go-to choice. I feel like it's a great middle ground between you know power, recoil, and you know ease of access. Uh, Dave, what's your favorite on this one? Boy, Chris, I hate to agree with you. Uh, the 30 out 6 and 308, both great choices if, if you're not necessarily going to go moose hunting, but would like something that could put down a moose. I think 300 Win Mag, I always bring it up. Ammo availability is really mm -hmm. you know, so important. This one you're actually going to find for sale and a lot of great options. And uh, you get you get a halfway decent shot on Bullwinkle and the Fearless Leader's Mooseberry Bush is all but assured. You've got it at that point, and if you need ammo for any of these, make sure you go click on that link down in the description or the pinned comment. Get your free coupon for ammo.com, and we'll see you out on the range.